You may be like many nonprofit leaders and thought approaching foundations for funding was way too complicated. Well, it doesn't need to be. I've got the answers to get you started down the right path to success. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Jim Dempsey, and this channel is designed to help you raise more money for your nonprofit. Let's get started. There are three keys to successful fundraising with foundations. Key number one, research. There are currently more than 86,000 foundations in the U.S. alone. There's no way you can reach out to each, nor should you. That's why you must do your proper research so that you can know which foundations to approach. Research is boring, time-consuming, but oh so necessary to be successful. It is essential that you know how to research foundation requirements, qualifications, and giving history. Key number two, persistence. Statistics will prove out that most foundations will reject your proposal the first time you ask them. In fact, many have a standard practice of rejecting first-time proposals without even looking at the proposal. Needless to say, some very valid projects or programs are missed simply due to standard practices of foundations. And this is where many organizations give up, and that's one of the biggest mistakes made. Since foundations are required to give away a portion of their assets each year, they are usually committed to other organizations that they already have relationships with. But if your research is correct and you're calling on the right foundation, then you just need to wait your turn. A typical foundation will give six rejections before giving the first donation, and many foundations only allow you to submit a proposal one time per year. So this is painstaking and a lengthy process, but you have to start somewhere or at some time. An old adage when approaching foundations for funding says, you need to get in line, stay in line, and get to the head of the line. Key number three, relationships. This is a primary key to fundraising of all kinds, and it's also true for foundations. A huge mistake made by many nonprofit leaders is that foundations should be treated like corporations. Perhaps it's because of their formal written procedures and requirements, but nothing is further from the truth. Who you know and how well you know them will almost always be the determining factor in your getting a grant. Therefore, you need to be building positive relationships with foundation trustees or the gatekeepers in the foundation. It's recommended that you follow these important steps to secure a foundation grant. Step number one, develop a strategic plan. If you have not yet done a strategic plan for your organization, determine now where you are currently and where you want to be as an organization in the future. Step number two, select a project. Determine a project or program within your organization that needs funding. At a minimum, it should be an urgent or at least a greatly needed project. Step number three, find the right foundation. Research to find the right foundation to approach with your project. Nearly every foundation has a specific objective purpose and criteria that must be followed. You want to find the foundation that best aligns with what you are trying to achieve. Step number four, develop a strategy using the information found in your research. Determine your strategy for approaching each individual foundation. Just as you should treat individuals uniquely, the same is true for foundations. Each has unique objectives and the individuals within the foundation are to be treated uniquely as well. Step number five, meet with the foundation. Just as with a major donor, it is best to meet with a representative of the foundation if at all possible, even if all it does is confirm the prerequisites and to ensure your purposes, mission, vision, values are the same as the foundation. Getting a meeting is not always possible. In fact, it's getting rarer and rarer these days, but you need to at least try. Step number six, make the presentation. Getting an opportunity to present your project would be very beneficial. Things can be said and done and questions or concerns addressed that couldn't happen in an email or a letter. This meeting is before you craft your proposal. Meeting with the foundation may send your proposal in a different direction than you had planned. 
At the very least, some foundations may not require a proposal from everyone. After meeting with a foundation representative who really liked my project, I asked how soon he would need the proposal. He said, oh, don't worry about that. Proposals are for those who we don't intend to fund. That is also rare, but it was very eye-opening for me. It showed me that not everyone is treated the same by foundations. Step number seven, craft a proposal. At this time, prepare and send a proposal. If you are able to meet beforehand, make sure you addressed areas of concerns. If you weren't able to meet before, see if you can address the proposal on a Zoom or other call. Check out the video above where I explain how to craft a, an effective foundation proposal. Step number eight, pray if you're a person of faith. Knowing that few proposals are actually funded, praying would be something that would benefit you and maybe calm your nerves. Knowing that the next move is theirs, you need to release the outcome. Step number nine, inform the foundation. Oftentimes the decision process can take a long time. It is important that you keep the foundation informed of the progress of the project if you had to begin the process while waiting for their decision. Step number 10, show appreciation. It's very important that you express appreciation for any decision that they make, not just the positive ones. Remember, it can take six rejections before the first donation is made. You want to develop a solid relationship with a good reputation along the way. Step number 10, report back on the results. Keep the foundation informed of progress of your project and what impact was made with the money they gave. Outcomes, even if negative, need to be reported to the foundation. Stories of changed lives and movement for the better should be highlighted. Step number 11, keep accurate records. Make sure that you do an effective job to keep records of all your progress, including successes during the past steps in the journey, and any quantitative data that can be derived from your work. Foundations include decision makers that are not only emotional givers, but also logical givers. So data of successes is just as important as stories or testimonies of success. Step number 12, ask the foundation again. Remember one of our key principles, be persistent. Whether you were funded or not, come back again with another proposal. This would be assuming all of your research was correct and this was a good match for your mission. If not, the decision maker will probably tell you if it was not a good fit. Approaching foundations are not as daunting or as complicated as they seem. Research, persistence, and relationships makes all the difference in this world. Remember to get in line, stay in line, get to the head of the line should be your mantra throughout your foundation process. Keep submitting and after a while, you should start to see success. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to this channel. If you have fundraising questions, submit them on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java or email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.